Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography and in this video there will be some landscape photography. There are no more gear reviews on the horizon. But as usual I'll start with a couple of images that you may not have seen if you don't follow me on social media that I've taken since my last video. Now these first two are from a paid commission. Usually when I'm engaged to carry out photography it doesn't involve landscapes so this has been a rare treat doing some work for a marketing brochure and website promoting the local area. So I really enjoy being able to put my personal compositional and editing spin on these images. And just to finish off I've got a little panorama here of the mainland seen from uh, a pull-in and viewpoint on the A55 just where the ridge crests at Gerwen. Unfortunately I haven't had the time to get up into the hills and get up onto some ridges while there's been snowy conditions but I did manage to grab a couple of hours popped over onto the mainland to visit somewhere that I don't go very often with my camera. Well, as you could probably guess, you won't find me anywhere near sunny Lamberis at any other time of year than the depths of winter. It's mid-January and despite that, there's still quite a few people knocking around. But it is a good jumping off point for lots of interesting things that this locality has to offer. We've got the slate quarry and the museum, the Snowden path, the train station, and of course the lake. Now, I got here a little while ago and I did something which I didn't think I ever would again. I stopped off at the Lone Tree and the reason for that is I knew that they were redeveloping the car park and I thought, eh, it's mid-afternoon, maybe it'll be a bit quieter than usual. It wasn't, so I didn't video it, but I did get an image which I've been mulling over for some time. I'll let you decide whether or not you think it's... Uh, any good but I wanted to try and interpret it differently from the norm and I'm particularly interested in the root system of this fabulous little birch tree as it clings on. The roots have grown around boulders and also man-made stuff like concrete slabs so I wanted to get that nice and sharp. I shot it really low with my 25mm prime lens. Uh, I think it's about a five second exposure. I can't remember because I didn't film it while I was down there getting the image. Hopefully you'll feel that was a bit of a departure from the norm. Now what I've done is I've come up to Dolbadan Castle. I thought I might as well go for a shot of it with a nice snowy backdrop because I was here anyway but what I've particularly come to try and make something of is this rather fabulous bit of woodland over here. Now it just so happens that it rains a lot around here and there are these little fragments of temperate rainforest. Bits of woodland where one plant grows on another and that's kind of the definition of rainforest. It has to have epiphytes. It's the sort of place where you'll find ferns obviously mosses growing on tree bark, lichens uh, and also liverworts. Now it may sound like I'm really knowledgeable about this sort of thing but I'm just regurgitating a lot of stuff that I've been reading in a rather fabulous book by a guy called Guy Shrebsole, The Lost Rainforest of Britain. At least I think that's what it's called. I didn't rehearse that before I came out so I might have butchered it but it's something like that. Anyway it's an absolutely fabulous read and we're quite lucky around here that we've got quite a few fragments left over. All around the base of Snowdon so here in Lamberis uh, over by the uh, quarry over the other side of the valley there 
around Capel Kirig, there's some woodland, a lot of people know at the bottom of the Watkin path. But what I thought I'd do, because I was so fascinated by the history of these rainforests um, and the sort of gathering momentum that Guy Shrubsoul has got together to try and preserve these forests, um, I thought I would come and have a look around and see what I can do with my camera. And the reason for that is there are some really nice colour plates in the book but they're taken by ecologists. They're people going, right, this is a particular lichen, this is a particular liverwort. And what I want to try and do is put a, a landscape photographer's spin on it a little bit, sort of arty-farty it up a bit. So I'm gonna be spending a bit of time down there a bit later on. But for now, let's just get a quick shot of the castle. What I'm particularly interested in here is the parallax between this boulder in the foreground here, which is going to be at the bottom of my frame, and the way you only have to move a couple of feet in any direction, not front to back, but left, right, up, down, and it changes the position of the castle against the backdrop. So I really want that ridge up there on Llechog in the image just coming out of the side of the castle and then of course Crib Gorch with a nice covering of snow. But uh, I wanted to make sure that this foreground wall interacts with the balcony and the way that the staircase heads down the side of the castle. So that's why I'm moving around here with the camera to work out where the tripod needs to be. Now it's on the wonk at the moment, I'll straighten it up in a second but that's a really important lesson that I've learned that setting your tripod up and just twiddling your camera about on the ball head really doesn't maximize the best quality composition. Take your time to move around without the tripod. Now, in addition to what I was saying just a moment ago about working out your composition, one thing that I found since I've switched over to using predominantly prime lenses is it really slows you down because you've got to think quite carefully about your focal length. You're not just zooming in and out. Although I do use uh, an iPhone app. I don't know if it works on Android as well. Um, Stuart McGlennon recommended it to me when I was up in the Lake District with him back in November. I've got no idea what it's called. Uh, I'll put a link to it or something in the description. But what it does is it emulates whatever camera sensor format you have, micro four thirds, APS-C, full frame, whatever. But you can set it to what prime lenses you have in your bag and you can quickly emulate the composition both landscape and portrait so that's really helpful but it doesn't be seeing the image and that final bit of composition when the lens is on the camera this is a very straightforward shot i'm shooting at f5.6 focused on the castle not too worried if this foreground drops off a bit but it's far enough away from the lens to probably not be a problem uh, I've got the composition I was after. Also, I've got quite lucky with the sky. There's a couple of banks of cloud that are sort of leading out away from the flank of the mountains up into the top left corner of the composition, which works really well. I've got it polarised. It's not having much effect, if I'm honest. Uh, also, shooting high res. Been doing a lot of high res stuff lately. Uh, the image I just shot down by the lake at the Lone Tree using high res. Um, I don't really need to, but I actually do quite like having the extra pixels in terms of how the post-processing affects the image. So I'm sharing on social media. Obviously, somebody with a vision impairment might want to buy a print, uh, but it does mean that when I'm processing the image, 
the, it takes longer of course, but it's got more data to work with, so I can be slightly more precise. I'm probably kidding myself, but it does high res and there's nothing moving in the scene, so I might as well use it. Right, okay, time to get into the forest. I've been moseying around these woods which are mostly beach, a bit of oak mixed in and of course some pine trees and I've had a fabulous time just wandering about but I'll be honest I struggle to find anything that I think is worthy of an image although this caught my eye and guess what it's because there's quite a prominent rock in it. My photography just seems to get drawn to rock. Uh, but I've got, uh, as it happens, two oak trees here and a view through to all these tangled branches as they go up with a backdrop of the mountain rather than the sky. Shooting at 25 millimetres on the prime and uh, very straightforward. These temperate rainforests are something that really should be carefully protected. They've suffered from two main things. One is sheep grazing, which as you can imagine in Wales has been pretty horrific in terms of uh, ruining any uh, primordial forestry. Uh, and also then the idiocy in the 70s of the Forestry Commission who thought it would be a good idea to plant conifers everywhere. Fortunately, that attitude has to some extent changing, but nevertheless, uh, these temperate rainforests are a fabulous environment and I know that a lot of photographers have got woodlands near them but they're, they're not old growth, they're new growth woodlands or they're heavily managed but if you get a chance to come to Wales do take the opportunity to have a wander around and if you're a, a better photographer than me of, of woodland subjects you, you'll probably really enjoy it. Well, I've been seduced by rocks again, I'm afraid. <laughs> Just can't help myself. Right up on this little summit here, it's one of the great things about this bit of woodland is that unlike a lot of woodlands, you know, it's not just a flat floor. These temperate rainforests often grow in steep clefts that hold the moisture in from the atmosphere. Uh, but anyway, I this, th this little it's a man-made pile of rocks, you know, let's make no bones about it. Um, but it's not exactly Stonehenge, so it's a bit more higgledy-piggledy. I've got a couple of beech trees that, that these rocks kind of lead you down to, both of which have got great big hollow clefts in the bottom of them, so they caught my eye. That's pretty much me done for today. Uh, unfortunately, my photographic activities have been somewhat hampered by some really feral children from the local estate. Although, who can blame them? I mean, you know, when I was eight, nine, ten years old, if I had an actual 10th century castle just outside my back gate, I'd probably spend an awful lot of time playing around that neck of the woods. But I'll probably be back here and back to some other woodland locations uh, in future videos because I really quite enjoyed it and, and it's really fired up my interest in them reading Guy's book. But uh, as for Lamberis, well, hmm, maybe this time next year, we'll see. So I'll leave it there for this one. Thank you ever so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not subscribe and join me next time? Cheers.